most welcome. In this video, we shall solve some problems on analytic functions. I hope you have seen my previous video on the derivation of necessary and sufficient conditions for a function to be analytic. If not, before you start solving problems in this video, you must watch that one. The link is in the description below and you can see above as well. Let us now quickly recollect a few things about analytic functions. First, two definitions. Let G be an open set. A function f from G to C is said to be analytic if f is continuously differentiable on G. And a function f is said to be analytic at a point z0 belong to C if there exists a delta neighborhood n delta z0 at all points of which f prime z exists. So, when we say that a function is analytic on a region, we mean that the function has to be continuously differentiable on that region. And when we say that the function is analytic at a point, then we mean that the function is differentiable at that point along with that at all points in a neighborhood of that point, in a delta neighborhood of that point. That is, for a function to be analytic at a point, we not only need the function to be differentiable at that point, but we need the function to be differentiable at that point as well as all points in a delta neighborhood of that point. So, this is how we define functions analytic at a point. Clearly, a function analytic on a region means it is analytic at every point on that region or you can define in the same way as I have uh, defined above. Now, the necessary and sufficient conditions for a function to be analytic. Let uxy and vxy be real valued functions defined on a region G and suppose that uxy and vxy have continuous partial derivatives. Then f from G to C defined by fz equals to uxy plus ivxy is analytic if and only if uxy and vxy satisfy the koch riemann equations. That is del u del x is equal to del v del y and del u del y is equal to minus del v del x. Now we have derived this necessary and sufficient condition or we have proved this necessary and sufficient conditions in our previous discussion. If you need a revision, quickly check my previous video on, on, on the necessary and sufficient conditions for a function to be analytic. The link as I have told you, you can see in the description below. That is, if the function is analytic in a region, then koch riemann equations will be satisfied. And for a function to be analytic in a region, both the condition that the function has to be continuous in that, in that region and CR equations has to be satisfied in that region. Both of this need to be true. Okay. Uh, also, I would like to remind you that we had seen further in our previous discussion that if fz is differentiable, then we can write f prime z, that is the derivative of fz at say any point x, y, we can write the derivative as the partial derivative of u with respect to x at that point x, y plus i into the partial derivative of v with respect to x at that point x, y. Uh, where where I am meaning by this by this notation u x I am meaning del u del x. So similarly for v x I will mean uh, del v del x etc. And alternatively this can also be written as this can alternatively be written as v y x y minus i into u y x, y. So, uh, any, 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 any representation you prefer, you can use because both will be same. We have derived this in our, in our previous discussion also. So, the point is, if my, 
function is differentiable, if my function is differentiable, fz is differentiable, then uh, the derivative of fz at any point xy can be written in this way. And we know that if a function is analytic, then essentially it is differentiable. So if a function is analytic, we can find out its derivative uh, in using using this uh, formula. So uh, this these are the things which we need to keep in our mind before we start solving problems. So you can quickly have a revision once again. You can pause the video and you can you can have a revision of this formula once again before we start solving a problem. So now uh, let us start solving some problems. This is our first problem. Test whether hyperbolic sine z is analytic or not. If analytic, find f prime z. Okay, let us solve it. I hope you remember the formula and properties of hyperbolic functions. If not, then you can check my video on hyperbolic functions. Uh, the link is in the description below and you can see above as well. So let me quickly, quickly uh, uh, tell you what will be the uh, relationship between circular trigonometric function and hyperbolic trigonometric functions. So we know that cos circular cosine, circular cosine ix is equals to hyperbolic cosine x and circular sine ix is equals to i into hyperbolic sine x. So, this is our uh, relationship between the trigonometric, circular trigonometric functions and hyperbolic trigonometric functions regarding the cosine and sine. So now let us solve this problem. Uh, find here fz is equals to hyperbolic sine z. Now uh, the first task, if we need to check whether it is analytic or not, then we need to uh, we need to and 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 actually you can understand here we are talking about the entire complex plane. It's not that we are checking whether it is analytic or not at a particular point. We are checking in the entire complex plane. So we can we can just check whether um, uh, the sufficient condition as stated above is true or not. That means I am again telling you the sufficient condition means the function has to satisfy the cauchy riemann equations as well as the four partial derivatives should be continuous. Del u del x del u del y del v del x del v del y. This four partial derivative should be continuous. Fine. Uh, let us check one by one. So, First of all, we need to determine what is my u and v here. So that means if I write if z is equals to u x y plus i v x y is equals to hyperbolic sine uh, z can be written as x plus i y. So this now I need to separate the real and imaginary part. For that actually I need to do something. Okay, let us apply this formula. So, if we apply this formula, then I can write uh, a hyperbolic sine x plus i y will be 1 by i into circular sine x sine i into x plus i y. So, that means I can write this is minus i into uh, sine i x sin ix minus y because i square equal to minus 1. So that means this will be equal to minus i into uh, if I if I use the formula it will be sin ix cos y minus cos ix sin y. Uh, that is equal to, if I write in a bit arranged way, this can be written as minus i into a sin ix. Sin ix is actually i sin hyperbolic x. So, if I use that, it will be i hyperbolic sin x, hyperbolic sin x uh, cos y minus See, 
circular cosine i x is equal to hyperbolic cosine x. So here I can write hyperbolic cosine x into sine y. Great. So this will be equal to uh, uh, if I if I multiply this minus i, so I will get here uh, hyperbolic sine x cos y plus i into hyperbolic cosine x sine y. Is it okay? Uh, you can do the calculation in your own also. Have a piece of paper and pen with you and try to solve the problems, all the problems in your own so that you can verify the result at the end. So this, that means, um, that means what we get, we get that for this particular problem, this is my uxy and this is my vxy. This is my uxy and this is my vxy. So now what do we need to find out? Now we need to uh, we need to find out the four partial derivatives because the statement says that if I again go back to the statement, the statement says that uh, this uxy and vxy have continuous partial derivatives. So we need to find out the four partial derivatives del u del x, del u del y, del v del x, del v del y and we need to check whether they are continuous or not fine so therefore here del u del x can you tell me what will be del u del x this is your u so del u del x will be okay what is the derivative of hyperbolic sin x i hope you can remember we discussed in our in our lecture on hyperbolic functions so the derivative of hyperbolic sin x will be hyperbolic cosin x so this will be hyperbolic cosine x, circular cosine y. Now you can understand that this is a product of two functions, one hyperbolic uh, 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 cosine function and the, and the circular cosine function and we know both of these functions are continuous. Therefore, their product will also be continuous. So this is a straight away I can write a, a continuous function. So I can write this exists, this exists and being products of hyperbolic and circular cosine functions which are continuous everywhere is continuous. So this, for, uh, this partial derivative del u del x exists and is continuous. Now let us check about the others. I hope you all can check now. So check about the other partial derivatives. So del u del y. Uh, can you tell me what is del u del y? So del u del y will be minus because the derivative of circular cosine y is minus circular sine y. So it is minus hyperbolic sine x and sine circular sine y. Okay. So this uh, now can you tell me what I can say about this? Can I draw a similar argument for this? Absolutely, because this is also a, 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 a product of uh, uh, two uh, functions, both of which are continuous. So the product will also be continuous. So I can write just the similar argument here. I can copy. So you just write the similar argument. I've just written do to save time. Now tell me what will be del v del x? Can you tell me what will be del v del x? Okay, the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x is hyperbolic sine x. So this will be hyperbolic sine x into sine y. And again, by the same logic, this will also be continuous. This partial derivative will also exist and continuous. And now let us find the other one that is del v del y. Del v del y. So del v del y. Uh, can you tell me what will be del v del y? Correct, that will be hyperbolic cosine x into 
cosine circular cosine y because the derivative of sine y is cosine y. And by the same logic, I can say that this is also uh, 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 continuous as a product of uh, two continuous functions. So fine. So we have seen that all the four partial derivatives exist in the entire complex plane and they are continuous as well. Now, if we compare their values, if we look at the values, say if we consider these two, then we can see here that del u del x is equal to del v del y. And if we look at these two, then we can see here that del u del y is equal to minus del v del x. So if I write this thing, therefore, what we are getting, we are getting therefore uh, del u del x, sorry, let me have del u del x, okay, del u del x is equals to del v del y and del u del y is equals to minus del v del x. Therefore, what you can say? Therefore, Cauchy-Riemann equations, therefore Cauchy-Riemann equations are satisfied. That is, previously we have seen that all four partial derivatives exist and continuous and now we are seeing that the Cauchy-Riemann equations are also satisfied. Hence, hyperbolic sine z is analytic on C. And we know that if a function is analytic in the entire complex plane, we call that function as an entire function. So this hyperbolic sine z is an entire function. So mm, uh, uh, the first part of the question has been answered. Test whether hyperbolic sine z is analytic or not, it is analytic. If analytic, find f prime z that is the first order derivative of f z and as per the formula you can see i have written here as per this formula f prime z can be expressed as can be written as uh, u x x y plus i v x x y now here we have already calculated what is our uh, u x means del u del x and what is my del v del x so i'll simply plug in this values in the formula and i will get it therefore uh, we can write, therefore, f prime z is equals to ux xy plus i vx xy that is equal to in this problem, let me see once again, what is my ux hyperbolic cos x cos y. So, hyperbolic cosine x cosine circular cosine y plus i into vx vx is hyperbolic sine x into circular sine y so circular sine y now what is to be done uh, any guess what is to be done absolutely correct now i will again substitute back uh, from this hyperbolic functions to the uh, circular trigonometric functions. So if I do that, let us see what I get. Uh, my formula is, uh, my formula are this. Circular cosine i x equal to hyperbolic cosine x and circular sine i x is equal to i into hyperbolic sine x. So here I have, I have here i into hyperbolic sine x. So I can write in this place, I can write hyperbolic cosine x is equal to cosine i x into cosine y plus i into hyperbolic sine x that means circular sine i x into circular sine y. So, can you tell me what uh, is written actually here? Exactly. This is cosine circular cosine ix minus y sorry ix minus y this is ix minus y so this is equal to if i take this i common so this is cosine i into 
x minus y by i. So that means cosine i into circular cosine i into uh, minus 1 by i means plus i. If I multiply the numerator and denominator by i, I will be getting here x plus i y. So that means this is cosine i. Now x plus i y is z. So cosine i z. Now again uh, by the same formula that we used earlier, cosine i z, circular cosine i z will be equal to hyperbolic cosine z. So what I have did I got? We have got the derivative of hyperbolic sine z is equal to hyperbolic cosine z. So this and our first problem is solved. So now this is our problem. This is how you can solve. Uh, you can you can test whether a function is analytic in the whole complex plane or not or whether the function is analytic in a particular region or not. And if that is analytic, how you can find out the derivative of that particular function. So this. Now let us solve another problem. Prove that the function fz is equals to u plus iv where fz is given in this way x cube into 1 plus i minus y cube into 1 minus i divided by x square plus y square when z is not equals to 0 and if z equals to 0 it is 0 is continuous and that cos Riemann equations are satisfied at the origin yet f prime z is not analytic there okay it might sound weird but let me remind you that a function is analytic at a point if it is differentiable at that point along with that every point in a neighborhood at that point so satisfying cost Riemann equations and being continuous at that point is not enough for a function to be analytic at a point as per the definition which I have discussed earlier also you can quickly go through that definition also uh, yes a function is said to be analytic at a point z0 belong to c if there exists a delta neighborhood in delta z0 at all points of which f prime z exists that means the function is uh, differentiable at all points in the neighborhood. So, so don't think that uh, when we test the continue the the whether the function is analytic at a point or not, when we test that, uh, it is not enough to have that the function is continuous there and the cos Riemann equations are satisfied there. We will see in this problem. And so, okay, let us do one by one. See here, uh, the function is we can write here. Uh, if you look at the function, if you look at the function, uh, say u can be written as equal to x cube minus y cube divided by x square plus y square and v can be written as, I hope you understand by u, I am meaning u of xy, means u is a function of xy and v can be written as x cube plus y cube just separate the real and imaginary parts for z not equals to 0 x square plus y square when uh, when z is not equals to 0 and uh, uh, both are 0 uh, when when uh, uh, z is equals to 0 so here we see that both u and v are rational and finite for all values of z not equals to 0 so u and v are continuous at all z not equals to 0 hence if z is continuous where z not equals to 0 now at the origin uh, both u and v are 0 hence u and v are continuous at the origin therefore if z is continuous at the origin so, if z is continuous where z not equals to 0, 
and if z we have seen is continuous at the origin also that is z equals to 0 also so we can say if z is continuous um, now at the origin let us find out the partial derivatives del u del x del u del y del v del x del v del y now we will find out the partial derivatives at the origin using the definition of partial derivatives therefore we get del u del x is equal to limit x tends to 0 u x 0 minus u 0 0 by x okay let us quickly see the definition of u okay can you tell me what is u x 0 okay u x 0 is uh, uh, x cube by x squared that is x minus u 0 0 u 0 0 that means the value of u at the origin and we have seen clearly that at the origin uh, as per the definition of the function u is 0 so this will become limit x tends to 0 x divided by x that is equal to 1 so del u del x is equal to 1 in a similar way let us find out del u del y del v del x uh, del v del y so we can see here that del u del y equal to minus 1 del v del x equal to 1 and del v del y is equal to 1 you can pause the video and check the calculation again or if you do it in your own own also so fine uh, now if we compare these two if we compare these two and if we compare these two we can see that del u del x equal to del v del y and del u del y is equal to minus del v del x therefore the cos riemann equations are satisfied so we have proved the first two part of our problem we uh, as per the problem we are supposed to prove that the function is continuous and the cos riemann equations are satisfied at the origin so we have proved the first two parts now what is left is uh, showing that the function is not analytic at the origin okay fine let us try to find out the derivative of the function at the origin. If the derivative exists at the origin, uh, then we can think further. And if the derivative does not exist at the origin, we can say it will clearly uh, uh, not be analytic because for being analytic, the derivative has to exist at that point along with that at all the points on a neighborhood of that point, a neighborhood of the origin in this case. So now let us try to find out the a derivative of the function in the origin so by definition f dashed at 0 that means the derivative of fz at z equals to 0 can be written as limit z tends to 0 fz minus f0 divided by z minus 0 that is z now if i plug in uh, uh, this fz and f0 we know f0 is 0 and fz is the expression that is available in the question so if i plug in the expressions we get this is fz minus f0 into 1 by z so that is 1 by x plus i y so this is my f prime 0 now uh, as we know this derivative will exist if this limit approaches to the same value independent of the manner by uh, which path z is approaching to 0. So uh, that means z can approach to 0 through any path, along any path, but the limit has to exist or the limit uh, should, should approach to the same value. If that happens, we say that the derivative exists or the limit exists. So now let us, let us choose two specific paths and let us see what happens whether uh, uh, along those two paths if z approaches to 0 uh, the 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 uh, limit approaches to the same value or not let us test so let z tends to 0 along y equal to x then we have f prime 0 is equal to i divided by 1 plus i i divided by 1 plus i so when your z tends to 0 along y equal to x then your f prime 0 is equals to i divided by 1 plus i 
Now, let me tell you here in the line above this line here in this place, limit z tends to 0. This z tends to 0 means x plus i y tends to 0. That means the ordered pair x y approaches to 0 comma 0. So, you can understand here along y equal to x, uh, y tends to 0 means x tends to 0. So, z tends to 0, writing z tends to 0 is same as writing x tends to 0. So, okay. So, that means uh, along along y equal to x, f prime 0 is equals to i divided by 1 plus i. Now, 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 now let us choose. Now, let us choose another, another uh, path. Say now, let z tends to 0 along y equal to 0. That means the x-axis. Let us see what do we get. We get f prime 0 is equal to 1 plus i. So, along y equal to 0, f prime 0 is equal to 1 plus i. That means f prime z as z equals to 0 when z approaches to 0 along y equals to 0 is 1 plus i. So, that means what do you have got? We have got that uh, when z approaches to 0 along, when z approaches to 0 along y equal to x, uh, this limit approaches to i divided by 1 plus i. And when z approaches to 0 along y equal to 0, this limit approaches to 1 plus i. Now, these two are not essentially, these two are not essentially equal. These two are not equal. These two are not equal. Therefore, what is our conclusion? Therefore, our conclusion is this limit does not exist. This limit does not exist. This limit does not exist. And this limit does not exist means the derivative of fz at z equals to 0 does not exist. Therefore, f prime z does not exist at origin. Hence, f z is not analytic at origin because to be analytic the function at a point the function has to be differentiable at that point and at all points uh, in the neighborhood of that point. Now we can see here uh, the function is not even analytic at that or not even differentiable at that point. So there is no question of being analytic at that point. So, the function is not analytic at origin. Now, this is a very, very important example. This tells you the whole scenario that whenever we talk about a, a function to be analytic at a particular point, it is not enough that the function is continuous and satisfies cauchy riemann equations at that point. At that point, the function has to be differentiable at that point along with uh, all other points in the neighbor in a neighborhood of that point also. Now, let us see what is our next problem. Determine p so that the function fz is equal to half into log x square plus y square plus i tan inverse px by y is analytic. Fine, this is a pretty simple problem. The function is analytic means Cauchy Riemann equations will be satisfied. Now, if we uh, here we have only one unknown that is p, so we will select any one of the two Cauchy Riemann uh, two equations in the Cauchy Riemann equations, and uh, we uh, we will we will equate uh, the two partial derivatives, and in that process we will find out the value of p. That is the uh, a line of solving the problem. So let us do it now here. This particular function is our uxy, we can understand, and this particular function is our vxy. So, therefore, here, can you tell me what will be our del u del x? Uh, quickly calculate, I hope you are having a piece of paper and pen with you. So, quickly calculate what is del u del x and tell me. Del u del x will be x divided by x square plus y square. Now, similarly, can you tell me what will be del u del y? Del u del y will be in a similar way. y divided by x square plus y square. Now, what will be del v del x? Del v del x will be py divided by y square plus 
p square x square and what will be my del v del y del v del y will be equal to minus px divided by y square plus p square into x square i hope you had paused the video and calculated these four partial derivatives yourself and got the same answer so now since uh, uh, the function is analytic or the function has to be analytic then cauchy riemann equations will be satisfied now since i have only one unknown i can choose any one of the two cauchy riemann equations so let us let us consider the equation uh, del u del x will be equal to del v del y del u del x is equal to del v del y so if we plug in the values of del u del x and del v del y let us see what we get therefore this implies actually del u del x that is x divided by x square plus y square is equals to del v del y that means minus px divided by y square plus p square x square so which implies x into y square plus p square x square is equals to minus px into x square plus y square which implies uh, if i cancel these two x's that means this implies y square plus p square into x square is equal to minus p x square minus p y square that means uh, if we bring everything in the left hand side we get y square plus p y square plus p square x square plus p x square is equals to 0 which implies uh, 1 plus p into y square plus p x square is equals to 0 so this means we got a nice expression so now we we got the value of uh, 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 p we can simply get the value of p therefore therefore uh, p is equals to minus one why because p is a constant uh, because if you equate the other 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 term in the product with zero you will get p is equal to minus x square divided by y square but p is a constant so p will be equal to minus 1 therefore p is equal to minus 1 so uh, if you plug in p is equal to minus 1 that means this uh, uh, this will be this uh, function will be uh, analytic now although it is not mentioned in the question but we can understand here that p has to be a constant so it will be it it would have been better if it is mentioned in the question that p is a uh, constant so that's it that's it for this problem now let us solve the fourth problem or the next problem prove that del del x mod fz whole square plus del del y mod fz whole square is equal to mod f prime z whole square when fz is analytic so we have to prove this identity when fz is analytic or if fz is analytic we have to show that this identity holds again we can understand uh, that fz is analytic means fz will satisfy cauchy riemann equation see if fz is written as u plus iv so this will be simple manipulation of the cauchy riemann equations so we, uh, uh, we if we manipulate cauchy riemann equations properly we will get this identity that is uh, what we can understand okay let us see how we can prove this uh, let fz is equals to u plus iv uh, therefore therefore f prime z will be equal to what as per our formula we discussed earlier this will be ux plus ivx now uh, fz is u plus iv therefore mod of fz will be equal to square root of u square plus v square 
and here and mod of f prime z can you tell me what will be mod of f prime z yeah i'm sure you all can tell me ux whole square plus vx whole square ux square plus vx square so this is mod of f prime z therefore the left hand side that means uh, del del z of mod f z whole square plus del sorry i made a mistake del del x del del x of this plus del del y of mod f z whole square will be equal to will be equal to let me have some space okay will be equal to what will be equal to uh, del del x of del del x of uh, mod fz that means square root of u square plus v square whole square plus del del y of um, del del y square root of u square plus v square whole square fine so that is equal to if we find this partial derivative can you tell me what will be this partial derivative uh, can you tell me we are partially differentiating this expression with respect to x where this u is a function of x y u x y and v is also a function of x y so keeping that in mind if we do the partial derivative we will get 1 by 2 into square root of u square plus v square into 2 u into ux plus 2 v into vx because i am partially differentiating with respect to x plus the second term will be in a similar way 1 divided by 2 into square root of u square plus v square into can you tell me what i should write here 2 into u into ui plus 2 into v into vy am i right so this uh, this will be equal to if we do a bit uh, calculation sorry i miss the whole square so whole square this will be equal to if i take the square root of u square plus v square common this will be u square plus v square the two will get cancelled from the numerator and denominators in each of the terms so i will get uh, u into ux plus v into vx whole square plus u into ui plus v into vy whole square so this uh, now this will be equal to if i expand this terms means i if i expand the whole square what i will get i'll be getting one divided by u square plus v square it will be a lengthy expression you uh, uh, you you uh, uh, look at the uh, terms carefully so that I don't make any mistake. So it will be u square into ux square plus v square into vx square plus 2 u v ux vx plus u square u y square plus v square v v y square plus 2 u v u y v y so this so this will be our terms so now now if i arrange a bit say 1 by u square plus v square into see from wherever possible if i take u square common uh, see for example here i have u square and here i have u square so if i take u square common from these two terms i get u square into ux square plus uy square okay uh, 
plus similarly if we look at uh, these two terms you can see i can take v square common so i get plus v square into what i get here i get vx square plus vy square so this uh, plus plus i get here uh, say if i consider these two terms i can simply take uh, 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 2 uv common so if i take 2 uv common i get uh, ux vx uh, plus uy vy so this so this is the uh, expansion and simplification now now if we consider now if we consider the cauchy riemann equations let us see what i can write here if i consider cauchy riemann equations then i can write here uh, okay uh, i i am going to use cauchy riemann equations in this portion basically in in these two terms here in vx i want to replace vx and here i want to replace this vy so if i if i use cauchy riemann equation so i know that this vx will be my minus uy as per cauchy riemann equation vx will be minus uy and vy will be what vy will be ux so as a result can you tell me what will be the value of this particular term absolutely correct this particular term will be zero so i can write using cauchy riemann equations cr equations what do we get using cauchy riemann equations we get here so this term will be simply zero so i will get here 1 by u square plus v square uh into into u square into ux square plus u x square plus okay again if i consider u y we know that by cauchy riemann equation this u y u y is equal to what this u y is equal to uh minus v x so this will be minus v x whole square that means i can simply write here u x square plus v x square plus v square into again if we think about applying cauchy riemann equation on this on this vy can you tell me what is vy as per cauchy riemann equation what you can write for vy we know as per cauchy riemann equation this vy is equal to u x so that means this term will also be my uh vx square plus u x square and the next and the, and and the, and the third term already uh we have seen that it will be zero so using cauchy riemann equation we get this that means i can take these part common if we think in that way so this will be equal to 1 upon u square plus v square into uh if i take that common it will be ux square plus vx square uh into u square plus v square so you can see these two terms get cancelled so this will be equal to u x square plus v x square now what is uh, what is u x plus v x square uh if you look at this mod f prime z equals to square root of u x square plus v x square so therefore what will be my u x square plus v x square this will be simply equal to mod f prime z whole square so we have proved that we have proved that uh, del del x of mod f z whole square plus del del y mod f z whole square is equals to 
mod f prime z whole square and that is what we had to prove okay fine so we have proved it so simply i will write now hence proved hence proved so we have proved this and you can you can see it is simple manipulation of cauchy riemann equations and doing partial derivatives nothing else so this has been our uh, third problem now let us see what is our fourth problem sorry the fifth problem show that an analytic function with constant real part is constant now this is a pretty simple problem once you understand it now uh, 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 a function is constant means analytic function is constant means both its real part is constant as well as its imaginary part is constant now what we have we have the function is analytic and its real part is constant so we need to prove only that its imaginary part is also constant okay fine let let um, fz is equals to u plus iv is analytic and u equal to c1 a constant so find uh, therefore if u is a constant we know del u del x will be equal to 0 and del u del y will also be equals to 0 now since since if z is analytic del u del x is equals to del v del y and del u del y is equals to minus del v del x now del u del x is 0 del u del x is 0 and del u del y is also 0 therefore what do we get therefore del v del y is equals to 0 and del v del x is also equals to 0 now v is a function of two variables x and y and we have seen when we are partially differentiating v with respect to both the variables x and y in both the cases we are getting zero therefore what we can conclude therefore our conclusion is v is a constant that means v is a constant let uh, uh, c2 so therefore what we can write therefore if z therefore if z can be written as equals to c1 plus i into c2 that means if z is a constant function that means if z is a constant function a constant function a constant a constant so if z is a constant function so i will now write hence proved so we have so far solved five different types of problems in our discussion today we have solved five different types of problems if you go through from the beginning we have solved five different kind of problems uh, from this first we had shown that a function is how how you can test whether a function is analytic at a region on a region second we have discussed about functions analytic at a point if it is analytic or not and we got a very important observation that the function being continuous and satisfying cauchy riemann equation at a point it does not imply that the function is analytic there that the function is analytic there so in this problem i made a mistake in the question it has to be yet if z is not analytic there i have written in the question f prime z so the question is yet if z is not analytic so i made a mistake i'm extremely sorry so this is not analytic there so now mm, okay uh, in the third problem we have found out a constant in an analytic function in the fourth problem we found we 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 proved an identity about analytic functions and in the 
in the fifth problem we have got a property of analytic functions so we have solved this five different types of problems now this five problem will remain as your homework or home assignment which are like the previous problems that we have solved you can see that the first problem is show that the function there is a function is not analytic at z equals to zero although Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied at the point how would you explain this now this function is looking a bit tricky that's why I have given you some hints also uh, the second problem is find the values of the constants a b c and d such that this particular function becomes analytic the third problem is if fz is equal to u plus iv is analytic and psi is any function of x and y with differential coefficients of first two orders existing then we have to show uh, that this is uh, uh, true we have to show that this uh, identity is true so i have given you a hint also uh, if you get confused now the fourth one is show that an analytic function in a domain with its derivative zero for every point of the domain is constant we know similar a kind of result for differentiable functions so again you manipulate cauchy riemann equations uh, to get this and the fifth one is a similar kind of problem show that an analytic function with constant modulus in a domain is constant so this five problem will remain your home task or or home assignment or or you can practice for better understanding so i hope that you will now pause the video and write these problems in a, a piece of paper and you start solving them so these are the five problems uh, you pause the video and you you write this problem in a piece of uh, paper and you start solving them one by one and let me know your uh, whatever you are getting your findings or your observations or if you have any doubt you need any further assistance don't don't hesitate let me know in the comment section below so i will be waiting for your comment uh, so this has been a lengthy discussion we have solved so many problems i have given you some problems also so that you can practice so practice these problems for better understanding let me know your doubts if you require any kind of further assistance in the comment section below take care see you in the next video